Hello, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. We're going to continue a theme that we've talked about recently here, and that is your power. Your power, your true power, your real power, and the fact that we underestimate this power all the time. We sell ourselves remarkably short. It's tragic, actually. So we're going to spend some time on that and on some practical solutions, what you can do about it, because this course offers us practical solutions. It is not concerned with mere theory. It's about practice. It's a self-study curriculum. That's important. If you're new to A Course in Miracles, this is what makes it unique. Now, understand, of course, that there are many doors in spirituality. All of them open to the same place. All roads lead to God in the end. All of them. Which explains the incredible diversity of spiritual traditions and practices that exist here in the world, from the traditional religions to something that someone could have come up with yesterday, and everything in between. There are many doors. This one is a self-study curriculum, which is important. It is not a religion, and it is not a cult. I am not in charge of you, for which I'm very grateful. No one but you is in charge of you. And we'll say some more about that. So there's no hierarchy. You take, under the guidance of our inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, what you wish to take at a given moment. I frequently add... You take what you're willing to take at a given moment. So here we are in the text, chapter 11, section 6, Waking to Redemption. And the idea of your true power comes right back into play. Because we underestimate ourselves, like I just said a minute ago, it's it's really sad, it's tragic how much we belittle ourselves and deny who we really are. And we do this all of the time. When we see ourselves as individuals cut off and separate from our brother, from other living things, when we parse our experience into multiple component and subcomponent parts, to the point where it looks like an outline, really, a scholastic outline with headings and subheadings, where we parse out and split everything, we're lost and confused. This is what leads us to spirituality. It's what leads you to the point where you are, where you're watching this video in particular, out of all of the content on YouTube, which has to be the most watched social media channel network in the world. It's got to be. But here you are, in the midst of all of this content. It's very important, and I hope that you realize how important your dedication and commitment to your spiritual practice is. We're invited here in paragraph five to not underestimate the power of devotion of God's Son. You, me, all of us. 
the Son of God. This is not limited to Jesus. It's not limited to solely Jesus. We are the Son of God, the Christ. The term Christ is not merely used to refer to Jesus only. We are the Christ, the Son of God, the extension of God, mm. the thought of God. So let's not underestimate our power. Now, at the same time here, we're told not to underestimate our power as God's Son, nor the power that the God, with a little lowercase g, the God we worship has over us. Now, what is this? The God we worship. Separation. The ego. In the language of A Course in Miracles, there's a distinction made for our learning purposes between God, God, the All, capital G, of course, and God with a lowercase g, an idol, in other words. And we're not talking about the golden calf. We're not talking about any kind of statue of anything at all, a graven image. That's not what we're referring to. An idol is something that we put our faith and belief and trust in that is an illusion. Separation is an illusion. You know what else is an illusion? The physical body, the world itself, our, our careers are an illusion. Our social status, whatever that may be, is an illusion. So an idol is, is placing our, it's, it's an illusion in which we place our, our trust and our confidence and we make it real to ourselves. And we appear to be stuck that way, running around doing the same thing over and over again and yearning for one thing and one thing only, the peace of God, which deep down we all want. So at first, when we set out on the spiritual path, we recognize that, well, we don't really know where to look for it because we've been looking for it in all of these idols. We've been looking for it in money. We've been looking for it in sex and, and great wine and social status and a bigger house and, and power and prestige and looking good on social media and the number of followers we have and the number of likes and comments and, and things like that. These things have tremendous power over us because we give them that power. We could withdraw it. I know that you know this, but it's one of these lessons, one of these ideas that we as adult learners, stubborn adult learners, need to hear again and again. Having given illusion power over you, you can withdraw your belief in it. You gave this power over you. Withdraw that. Instead, give it over to your inner teacher and let him run the show. That's what we're all invited to do. So it's our choice. Something very interesting. Jesus says, your slavery is as complete as your freedom. Mm. When we see ourselves as separate, we suffer, period. It's inescapable when we see ourselves as an ego because the ego wants us all to believe in separation. In fact, there is no ego because there is no separation. The ego is not some monster or some enemy. 
that we must vanquish and crush, it's transcended not through violence or a physical or a mental altercation, but by letting it go. Forgive it. In your practice of true forgiveness, how often do you forgive the ego? Something to consider. It's nothing. So we can choose to bind ourselves. We can choose to enslave ourselves. We can choose to make ourselves sick and miserable. Or we can choose our real power. Our real freedom. Real, true freedom. We can choose the peace of God. We do have this choice. This is the choice that we all have in the present moment. There are exactly two options. Which we choose is just as complete as the other. One's illusion, one's truth. One's illusion, one's truth. One's darkness, one's light. One's fear, one's love. Hmm? The ego demands sacrifice and pain, and God demands nothing. Maybe not the way you were raised to think about it. I certainly wasn't. For those of you who have seen some videos here, you may know that I was raised in not one, but two fundamentalist Christian traditions. And I sat through many a Sunday school lesson. Perhaps some of you can relate. Many a lesson where I could resonate with some of what was being said, of course. You know, love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm, your neighbor is yourself. So yes, that makes sense, doesn't it? But there was a lot being said that I simply did not resonate with. So I found myself thinking about multiple other things, like a football match, or, or pizza, or, or how much homework I had to do for Monday, the, the following day, and how I was going to have to spend the rest of the afternoon after this discussion doing homework. I had a paper to write, and then an art project, and then, oh, what am I going to have for dinner? And, and I, I didn't pay attention to a lot of what was being said, because it didn't make sense to me. It was a lot of separation. And when I would ask a question such as, what's the Holy Spirit? Nobody would be able to answer that. They, they, I got a lot of, well, I don't really know. Fine, that's honest, right? One question I asked, and you may find yourself asking this as well, or perhaps you did, why would a God that proclaims to be love and loving condemn people? Why would he parse out and judge some people? And jealous? Really? And I was thinking this as a kid. And the answer is God doesn't do any of that. God does not judge. He asks nothing. He's not vindictive, nor jealous, nor wrathful. When we think we're individuals, when we side with the ego, when we think we're an ego, we're the ones that are wrathful and vindictive and judgmental. We're the ones that would strike one another and ourselves down. Because we think that our brother is opposite from us. We think he's outside of us. And that is a mistake. It's nothing but a mistake. God demands nothing. God is love. Well, love doesn't make demands. 
nor issue conditional forgiveness, nor say, well, I'll love you if you do this. But if you do that, well, then you're going to burn in a lake of fire forever. <laughs> no, it's, it's not like that. Something very important here in paragraph five, which if you're compelled to go over and read and reread, that's very good. God does not require obedience either. Mm -hmm. God does not require obedience because obedience implies submission. Ah. God does not require obedience because obedience implies submission. We're not two. There is not one superior to another. Yes, God created us. However, he extended himself in perfect oneness. There is no submission. There is no separation of any kind. When we give our experience over to our inner teacher and say, hey, run the show, we're not giving our mind and our intellect and our life and our, our, our physical strength or anything like that, our voice, we're not giving that over to an alien will. The Holy Spirit is part of our mind, that part which speaks for God, that speaks truly and will tell us what to do what to say and to whom in every circumstance, if only we allow him, it, to do it. So freedom can't be thrust upon us. It can be offered us through the grace of God, and we're invited to accept it. Another important point about your own power is that freedom can't be thrust upon you. So as much as we may wish to be enlightened immediately and for Jesus or the Holy Spirit to simply wave a magic wand in a Jedi mind trick style and make us fully awakened right now, please and thank you, you know, it, it can't be thrust upon us. Because our inner teacher knows what we're ready for. So to have a blinding flash of awakening might terrify you. And to the extent that it would, it's not going to happen until you're ready. So most of us get what appears to be a gradual program, which is what we're supposed to get. Now, is it possible to have a blinding flash? Sure. Of course it is. But if that doesn't happen for you in the next 15 minutes, I invite you to please not be disappointed because in those 15 minutes, you will have, should you be aware of them and pay attention to them, multiple forgiveness opportunities. Perhaps you have one right now. Anything that is not wholly joyous is the raw material for forgiveness. In other words, it's the raw material for our awakening. Because as we forgive it, we do not have to repeat these forgiveness lessons. Time shortens, apparently, because there is no time. Mm. If you're just tuning in, time and space are separation devices. They are. They're separation thoughts. Because there is only perfect oneness, perfect oneness is eternal, constant. In other words, it's outside of time. Time is a convention that we made up. We're not separate from our brother in time, nor are we separate from our brother in space. How can we assert this? There is no separation of any kind. Perhaps you're beginning to get a glimpse of how radical this course, in fact, is, and how completely different it is from the thought system of the world that posits that this 
device is you. The aim of A Course in Miracles is for us to change our mind. Nothing less than that. To change our mind about who we are and what we are and where we are and who, what, and where our brother is. All of that. A complete perceptual 180. You deserve nothing less than that. Because you have the power of God. It's, it's what we all are. One equals one. And there's no need for us to go forth and continue to underestimate our power. It's not power over anyone else. It's not like that. It's not like temporal power or political power in the world where one person or a group of people appear to be higher on a hierarchical ladder. There is no hierarchy. There is only perfect oneness. So our power is not power over, but rather power with. Power of wholeness, oneness, love, peace, God. We're invited to lean into that and accept it. And yes, we're invited to cogitate on these ideas and to stew on them and allow them to percolate. Oh, yeah. Allow them to brew and to permeate our mind. And then the real learning kicks in when we put them into practice. What then happens in our practical application, our experience shows us that these ideas are, in fact, true. We prove the truth of these ideas to ourselves. We prove perfect oneness to ourselves. Want proof? Good, I hope you do. But I will not prove anything to you of myself. You'll prove it to yourself. I'm simply here to help. You could say the same of anyone. So, lots of in-depth stuff. Again, you deserve nothing less. This course says what it says, and there's no point in trying to alter that. Because we all want the peace of God, and because you're paying attention to this, you're ready to have the Holy Spirit simply tell it like it is. We say we want this in all aspects of life, especially in our economic life, where we want somebody to, to, to quit beating around the bush, so to speak. We, we want them to get to the point right now. What's the bottom line? And we become deeply, deeply impatient and even frustrated and angry with people when we sense that they're not just laying it all out there. So the Holy Spirit's laying it all out there. Will you listen? And I, I invite you to. I do. All right. So along the way, questions are inevitable. I mean, this is spirituality, after all. And should you choose to continue down this path with this self-study curriculum, then questions will arise. Because, I mean, what is a spiritual path but a deep process of self-inquiry, after all? So to the extent that questions arise for you, please feel welcome to leave them here in the comment thread. There have been a number of really excellent questions asked here lately. And if you have um, another comment or you just wish to stop in and say hello, then I'd love to hear from you. Please go ahead and leave those comments. Also, please subscribe if you have not. We'd love to have you join us. This arrow in the corner of your screen over here is the subscription prompt. So when you hover over that or click that, 
you'll be invited to subscribe and join us. There are several videos, several conversations that appear each week as we go through a course in miracles. So our spiritual practice is always there. You will always have opportunities for forgiveness. So when you notice them, forgive. That's it. And then when you notice the next opportunity to forgive, you forgive. Just like that. All right. I'll see you all soon.